Hi, I'm Mary Tressler. I'm here with Tony Parisi, author of WebGL Up and Running. Welcome, Tony. Hey, Mary. How you doing? Good. How are you? I wanted to talk to you a little bit about WebGL today. In your opinion, what's so exciting about the technology? To me, WebGL represents the next step in visual programming on the Internet. It's 3D running in your browser in real time, but you don't have to download any custom software. It's just built right in. If you're a web developer, that means you can build a 3D animation, a data visualization, an enterprise computer aid design and collaboration system, uh, or a video game. All you need is a web browser, JavaScript, and a standard web technology backend stack. So that's pretty exciting. It's part of the HTML5 family of technologies that's turning your web browser into a first-class rich application platform. Very cool. So if I'm a developer, um, why should I use it? Why should I use WebGL? Well, first and foremost, you might want to look at WebGL building an inherently 3D application. Let's say you're building something for viewing 3D models in a computer-aided design setting. That's a natural because now you have a rendering system that really renders with fidelity and high performance. Uh, another, app, another example might be, say, a video game. Um, second, you may want to use WebGL simply to get higher performance and visual fidelity out of potentially a 2D animation application. I've seen some examples where developers have actually rewritten their 2D games that were using a 2D canvas in WebGL because they were getting higher performance or better visual effects. And in fact, uh, Google has rewritten Google Maps. There's a beta right now for the 3D version of Google Maps. I don't have the URL handy, but I think it's easily accessible. And they've actually rewritten the entire Google Maps application from the ground up using WebGL. Mm. Wow. And it runs smoother and faster. That Yeah, the transitions are faster. And some of the zoom effects are just different, really cool. It's, it's intangible, but I mean, it just feels... Uh, great. So you may, as a web developer, simply want to explore it for performance or better visuals, even though the experience isn't inherently uh, 3D. Another reason you may want to look at WebGL is if you want to build some presentation graphics or visual effects that are really breakout. Maybe you want to build a breakout website for your boss. You know, you work at a car company, mm. you want to have some really uh, cool visuals on the site. Uh, new kinds of animations, the, the capabilities in WebGL for doing uh, what they call programmable shaders, mm. serious high-end visual effects are stunning and, and they beat anything you can do in, in, say, your typical CSS animation. And so, you know, maybe you want to build the next uh, breakout website for your boss or to, you know, do something really cool out there that no one else has done before. So, you know, maybe it's simply a motivation of uh, what you're doing on your daily job or, uh, you know, vanity thing. But... It's an amazing presentation technology that people need to explore and try to take advantage of. Sounds awesome. Um, so, but if you're trying to learn it, um, where do you start? What's the most, I guess, really the question I want to know is where do you, what's the most difficult part of getting, getting going with WebGL, in your opinion? Yeah, so in, in my opinion, the hardest place to get going with WebGL is just finding out the information to get started. That's actually why I wrote my book, which I'm going to talk about shortly. So um, if you Google WebGL, you're going to get thousands of hits. There are certainly lots of websites out there that can tell you bits and pieces about WebGL. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of scattered. The information isn't complete. It's not that well covered. So okay. that motivated me to, to write a book about it called WebGL Up and Running, where that information could be collected in one place. Um, besides that, the other, the other thing about WebGL that's a bit hard to get going with is it's a very low-level system. It's just a drawing API, similar to the 2D canvas, mm -hmm. but it's actually that much harder to use because you're doing 3D graphics and there are a lot more things you have to cover and a, and a lot of sort of bits and pieces to string together to draw your graphics. And so one of the things that has happened in the uh, marketplace is people are building these toolkits, these open source toolkits that sit on top of WebGL. And, and in the book I wrote, we talk a lot about those toolkits and we actually use them uh, in all the examples because it would be too hard to get going with just a raw WebGL API without it. Right. So, I, you know, leads to a great question. You know, you use one in particular in the book. Um, you know, is that, obviously, it's probably one of your favorites, but is there a better one to use? Is it dependent on what you're doing, um, you know, what you're trying to create or... Can you give um, the folks out there some advice on what they should be looking at? Sure, yeah. So I, I chose a toolkit called 3.js, 
Uh, it's available on GitHub. It's continuing being updated and maintained. It's got a great crew of core collaborators, uh, one main author and, and two other uh, folks who contribute a lot of code to it. Mm -hmm. It's got tons of examples. Actually, uh, Google has worked with the 3GS creators a lot to do a lot of demonstrations in very different areas. Um, there's a very cool WebGL piece called Rome, R-O.me, hmm. that was done with the band Arcade Fire. It's an interactive film. It's really compelling. That was built in 3.js. And, in fact, 3.js was kind of built to support that. Um, you know, so okay. that, that's the way that the authors have been building 3.js is, you know, based on projects like that. But there are several other toolkits out there. There's one called GLGE, another one called Scene.js. Another one called Cubic VR that was a port of an original uh, C++-based virtual reality system from mm -hmm. back in the day. So there's a lot of different choices. I chose 3GS because it's got good feature coverage for doing general purpose 3D graphics, lots of different kind of applications. It's really easy to use. Performance is great. The authors know what they're doing on the performance. And it's just got tons of features for cool visual effects. So my personal mm -hmm. favorite, it's not actually a game engine. Um, so if you want to build a game or some kind of virtual world on top of it or any advanced application, you end up having to write a lot of your own support on top of 3JS, but at least it removes the need to do all this low-level drawing stuff that would take your typical developer weeks or even months to get right on top of WebGL. Okay, okay. So is it um, specific to, like, if I was doing something like a visualization, would I want to use something different, or it really just depends on what, what your your features are that you're trying to, to build out? So one of the toolkits I looked at, Cubic VR, seems to have come from a high-end visualization world where uh, there were computer-aided design applications, large data visualization, medical visualization. Hmm. So people may want to take a look at that one for that, that those kind of areas. Okay. But all the other ones I've looked at, pretty general purpose. They're just all about creating 3D objects with their materials, their lights, the typical things that are done in your 3D graphics, but again, if you were just coding in low-level WebGL, you'd have to spend a little time building up the support for that in your JavaScript. So there's, I, for most people, there's no point in bothering to do that. They just get one of these off the shelf. Most of them are open source, so they're, you know, they can maintain them, fix their own bugs if they need to. Okay, very cool. So um, I've seen a few animations online that were created with uh, WebGL, but wondering if you can point folks, I think it's always cool for developers to be able to see what they can do with the technology. What are some of the cool projects you've seen um, that you might be able to point us to? Well, still my all-time favorite WebGL piece is at uh, chrisaura.com. I would be challenged to spell it, but chrisaura is the name of a jellyfish. It's actually the jellyfish on the cover of my <laughs> WebGL book. Um, I, I liked it so much. And that is an interactive simula simulation of a live jellyfish forest. Uh, with beautiful pulsating uh, jellies, uh, a murky ocean depth with light streaming through, and it's fully interactive. You can use your mouse to control the camera, basically move around and, and fly through the jellyfish forest. There are several options for controlling the display, you know, different properties of it, so you can get a really nice presentation. And again, all of that's just basically written in JavaScript, which is, is the truly amazing part. Wow. When you see it, it's breathtaking, and it, just talking about it doesn't do it justice. So. I don't know, maybe when we post the video, we can post a link to chrisauer.com because, I, like I said, I don't know how to spell it. Um, another one that I love, one of my, my personal favorites as well, is uh, on the completely other end of the spectrum, still, still somewhat whimsical, but it's, it's actually a, a business application, and it's called My Robot Nation. And um, this is for consumers to go and build their own little figurines. I'm trying to get my hand in the view here. Yeah. Build, build their own little figurines using an in-browser modeling package where they click and they build a, a, a robot, they put mm -hmm. the head on, they move the arms around, uh, they paint it, they put decals on it, and that sounds like fun of itself, but then they can hit a button that says, buy my robot, and what that does is 3D print that robot. It actually prints the real thing for you. Wow. It's, it's static. It does, the arms won't move or anything. That's, that's too hard for them to manufacture at this point, but it prints the static figurine that shows up in the mail in three or four days. That, that's kind of amazing, right? And your old son has is, is printed a dozen of them himself. Oh, that's cool. Um, and, yeah, that's very cool. And, and the company actually did so well. They made a whole bet on WebGL as their interface. And, and it's, the modeling is in 3D and WebGL. The whole interface is HTML5. 
they made this bet on that and they were so successful at it that their little two-person company was acquired by 3D Systems, which oh. is a really successful 3D printing company that, that's been on the high end for years, but now they're making these consumer printers, this, this little $1,300 home printer called the Cube. And, and uh, Sarah and Mark from iRobot Nations now uh, run their consumer division in San Francisco and they're building WebGL interfaces to 3D printing for everybody. That is so how awesome. Is that? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. It sounds like something that should be uh, part of our maker fair for sure. Um, Absolutely. Oh, that's. I think they might have even shown last, last summer. Yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome. That's cool. So, um, what do you think um, is next for WebGL in terms of where you see it going? I mean, to me, there, it, it still feels like it's in the early days to some degree. Um, but you know, what, what do you think is ahead for it? What do you think the challenges are and, and where, do, where do you hope to see it go? So, uh, pieces like Ellie Goulding's lights, for example, you know, they're, they're going live now. And so I think seeing it, WebGL showing up in Mark sites in real applications. So I believe we've moved past the experimentation stage to seeing this being put into real applications. Another one that's worth looking at is sunglass.io. It's a 3D collaborative computer-aided design application. Hmm. So they've carved out a, a little niche for themselves doing a, basically a CAD package, but shared over the web. You don't have to download any software. You've got CAD models on your desktop. You can upload them. They'll convert them on the server, and then, boom, you can see them in your web browser with WebGL fully interactive. I think we're going to start seeing those kind of applications. I think we'll see WebGL being used in big data for sure. An obvious one, we'll see a lot of video games built in WebGL. And uh, probably a few more books before it's all over as well. I'm <laughs> actually thinking about writing a couple more because uh, I had such a good time doing this one. Well, that's good news. Um, do you want to tell folks what they what you might be writing about, or? Well, you know, I'm considering a, a couple of different possible books. I mean, certainly game development is an area that's interesting to a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I'm right now developing a game toolkit. Um, for, for developers to use to build games and make, make it quicker for them. So layering on top of the 3JS toolkit I mentioned would be more mm -hmm. game constructs, physics, artificial intelligence, collision, the things you need to build a, a professional game and uh, making that all easy and you know, building, with building tools in the browser, for example. And I'm also considering something even broader than that, which is general visualization, because there's so much interest in WebGL. And, and it, it, as a presentation technology, mm -hmm. it's uh, something to look at big data, something to understand the human body, science. And, and so maybe these tools I'm working on now won't be just for games. And so while I'm doing all that, I'm thinking about why don't I just document it while I'm doing it? Write another O'Reilly book. How fun would that be? <laughs> that would be great. Um, I, I do think a big part of, of getting more folks involved in using the, the technology is to be able to show them and take them down the, the road of um, teaching them what actually can be done. I think there's a lot of, at first there was a lot of uh, what is WebGL, and now folks are really start, starting to dig in and look at what it can, what its capabilities are. So I think um, either one of those is obviously going to be a great, a great title for us, um, for all of us. And I think... Um, in particular, I think the, the big data, the visualization is such a hot area. We're seeing that with our strata conferences and what's going on in that space. So many more people have to um, figure out how to communicate big data sets these days. So, um, well, great. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for joining me today. And um, we'll speak with you soon. You're very welcome, Mary. It's been an absolute pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.